Well, how is this for ambitious? We're going to try and walk you through a piece of meat from being a cow all the way to being in the pot. We're going to start with Robert. He's a farmer. Tell us about your farm an hour north of Mudgee and why is it different? What are you doing up there? Okay, well, we've been there about 15 years. It's about 2,000 acres. And um, we try and look after the, the, the land and the, land, the animals as best as we can. Yeah. And, so, and you're marketing a very different breed. It's Wagyu beef, which is a Japanese breed, with Angus. And you're the only people doing it. Tell us why you do that. Well, the two big things are flavour, or eating quality generally, and also health aspects. Uh, yeah, we are the only people in Australia that do it, and, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's something we feel very strongly about. Because Wagyu can be very expensive, and by blending it a little bit with Angus, the Angus herd, you can make it a bit cheaper. You also sell only the, the whole carcass? Yes, half and full bodies is all we sell, um, and we try to make it available for all Australians for special occasions, and that's part of the reason for the... The, uh, the crossing. There's also production advantages for, for crossing the hybrid vigour and, and um, calf scales and things like that. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Robert, thank you very much. Uh, Grant, now you are a provador of meat products. Tell us about what you do and why it might be slightly different to others. Well, as an organisation, we work with people like Rob and other farmers and we buy directly from them. So we don't deal with wholesalers and we don't deal with, with abattoirs directly. So we only deal with farmers and we're interested in how they grow their, they grow their animals and very interested in animals that are grown outside. They have to be not intensively raised and we buy the whole carcass from them. So they don't have to worry about how it gets cut. We can buy the whole carcass. We age it and cut it at our place and then we distribute it both to wholesale and retail customers. Can I ask you one question I've always wanted to know the answer to? Yeah. You know when you butcher, say, a cow, it has to hang for a couple of weeks. Why? Well, dry ageing on the bone, which is what that's known as, does, does a range of things. It, it tenderises the meat through enzyme activity that's actually present, helpful enzymes in the meat. They break down the protein structure in the meat and tenderise it. But they also develop flavour at the same time. They get rid of excess moisture, so it's more concentrated, but they give you secondary flavours. It's very similar to what happens if you age wine. You get the primary character of the meat and you also get a secondary character developing, more earthy characters, much more interesting. It also means that the meat's more concentrated, much better to eat, you know, flavour. You're concentrating flavours. Grant, speaking of concentrating things, you just did really well there in like a minute. I'm sorry we've got so little time. That's Thank right. you very much. Ronnie, um, you do something with food once it kind of has got to our plate and almost, is almost missed our plate. What do you guys do? Well, what we do is we rescue perfectly good food that would otherwise go to, go to waste and deliver it to organisations that could never afford fresh meat, dairy, fruit, veg that's perfectly good and feed it to disadvantaged, vulnerable Australians. Okay, so let's break that down. Yeah. You guys are from Oz Harvest. You take uh, uh, food which would otherwise go to waste from restaurants and from, from, restaurants, um, from high-end hotels and from stuff. restaurants, delis, hotels, convention centres, butchers, manufacturers, farmers. So let's say there's a, a, a farmer or a provador has surplus f meat, that the, it's the use-by date is tomorrow, he can't use it. Our agencies have minuscule budgets. They could never afford fresh meat. They could never afford the kind of produce that now we are able to give them. So we would collect that meat, deliver it to an agency that knows what to do with it, and then they serve it to their people for free. So we collect for free, deliver for free, and they give it away for free. Ronnie, amazing. Thank you so much. Now, Sarah Wilson, uh, also uh, TV host, uh, columnist, uh, you're at the moment kind of campaigning on how we can make sure we get the most out of food? Yeah. Um, I work with Target 100, which is an initiative of the beef and lamb industry to sort of get together farmers and consumers to ensure that they're, I guess, engaging sustainable practices. Just getting people thinking differently about meat and the kinds of meat they're, they're eating. And you know, one of the big questions I get asked is, well, I want to use sustainable meat. I want to use meat in different ways, but it's too expensive. And the point is, it doesn't have to be. It's about using other cuts of meat. We all know about osso We know about lamb shank you know they can actually be really really economical so I'm all about kind of getting people on board at that end of the equation. So getting a slow cooker, winter's coming up, whacking that ham bone from last Christmas in, Perfect. putting in some split peas and kind of having that bubble away for 48 hours, 72 hours. You sound like you've done it before, exactly, exactly. I've got a little bit of experience but you're really about making sure some of those cuts don't get wasted that we use and re because I mean back in the day we used, didn't waste anything but it seems we've got yeah. to this point where it has to be the best cut which what is the problem is is that um, you know there's not enough 
uh, demand for these cuts. You know, w the, the, the supermarkets and the butchers aren't actually, you know, asking for these cuts from the, the suppliers um, because there's not enough demand. I'm trying to create that demand, getting people asking about these different cuts of meat, but also when they're eating out, not wasting meat. Um, you know, sort of one in five, um, you know, grocery bags that we bring home each week has been thrown out. Now, I think it's even higher than that when it comes to meat. People throw out meat all the time and hopefully today we can show what goes into producing that slab of meat that you take home from the supermarket and get a bit more respect.